When you do a showing and see a home you like, what is the only question that matters? Is the home worth a price? Today we'll answer that exact question. By the end of this video, you'll understand the top five factors that determines home price through my eyes. You'll start to see homes not by price, but by value. Because price is what you pay, value is what you get. The top five factors that determine home price are location, view and privacy, accessibility, property size, and property condition. They're ranked according to what you can't change to what you can. One, location. Location, location, location. It is the single most important aspect of real estate because it's fixed. Take a look at these two properties sold this year. With only this information, what do you think? Now, if I added location, would that change it? These are the actual sold prices. To help really conceptualize location to price, using these properties as an example, let's think about it this way. Would you like to live next to the beach? How much would you pay for that? Would you like an unobstructed view? How much would you pay for that? Would you like two more hours every single day due to a shorter commute? How much would you pay for that to enjoy it with those you love? Leave your thoughts below in the comments on what trade-off you would make yourself. While it may not be worth it to you, the price is determined by all of the buyers in the market. And because of that, it's not static and can certainly change. Well, during COVID, the buyer market shifted their focus to the single family homes outside the urban core. And it makes sense when you think about how COVID impacted lifestyle changes, how you spend your time at home and where you work again at home. More space became important, but location was not. But that trend is only a COVID trend and you're seeing it revert back this year. Check out my neighborhood update video that goes over exactly that with the data to support it here. The neighborhood you buy in absolutely matters for many buyers. How you feel about your safety, how close it is in proximity to shopping activities or work all impact your livelihood. Now for families, which school district they live in sometimes is the number one priority. Ranking what is important to you and how you spend your time is a key part of success when buying and all determined by location. Number two, view and privacy. The Diamond Head home was a jump start to the second factor that reflects how all of these factors relate. Even within the same neighborhood, pricing can vary significantly due to view and privacy or the lack thereof. Now let's take a look at these two properties here that reflect those differences. Now it's the area I grew up in, but more importantly, they sold for the same price in the very same time period. Comparing these two properties, the difference is a 50% increase in interior square footage and easily over $100,000 in renovations versus a perimeter lot that has much less traffic and noise. Personally, I would take the Apollo Street home every day of the week, but it goes to show the value of that perimeter lot for the view and privacy. Which one would you choose? Write your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to know what the majority think. Now on Oahu, it's not only about having a view, but what the view is that determines value. This is especially important when purchasing a condo. It's a combination of the floor and which direction it faces, which typically the most premier view towards Diamond Head and or the ocean, with the least favorable view towards Leeward or and the mountain. Now look at these two properties from the same building sold at around the same time. Nauru Tower is known for an unobstructed view overlooking Ala Moana Beach Park. While the size of the units are fairly similar, the layout of the units and view direction differs significantly. The 01 and 08 stack are the least desirable due to the layout, view amount, and view type. With the 04 and 05 being the most. The combined floor, view, layout, and renovation difference is valued at over a two times premium reflected in the sold price. Number three, accessibility. 
how you get to and around your property has a significant impact on how you can or cannot live in a home. If the daily commute included going through your driveway like this, would you care? What if it looked like this to park? And to get to the house, you had to walk through this. For the majority of the population, it probably doesn't impact your buying decision. But let's be real. Are you the ones that are in the position to buy these homes? Because the two examples I just showed are properties selling for over $1.5 million in this market. Let's break down some of the buyer types to help understand the price of accessibility. You know, you have a young couple with a dog. What they're looking for more than likely is more space and a yard for their dog. Now, let's say they're thinking about kids, so they want to upgrade. Do they sell their place or keep it as a rental? Now, let's say this couple has those young kids. Finding a neighborhood that's safe, close to school, close to work, or close to family is now important to them. Let's say now the kids are off to college and not returning home since <laughs> that's what happens often here. What they might be looking for is to sell or keep as a rental and downsize. Now, what about when they hit their 70s and walking up those stairs becomes a problem? The buyer market in relation to the life cycle of a buyer helps determine the accessibility value. So entrance to the lot, entrance to the home, stairs, usable yard are all factors here. Accessibility also includes ease in parking for the homeowner and any potential guests. If we take the couple with the kids again as an example, it's very likely they both work, have two cars, and use them daily. What happens if they live in town and only have one parking? What about the family that loves to entertain? Would they buy a home that has no additional or street parking? How much is that parking worth? Let's take Nauru Tower again as an example to find the answer. They have two bedroom units that have one parking versus two. It's fairly standard in condos that lower floor units have only one parking versus higher floor units with two. Now, adjusting for the factors, one of the best examples I have are these two units here. They sold in the same time period, same stack, which means same layout and view. Difference is nine floors. Renovations and second parking. That accounts for $500,000 in difference noted in the price. Now, typically an additional stall is worth between $25,000 and $75,000 depending on the location of the building. But for some, no price difference is worth having to find street parking in town every day. Now, what do you think? Share with me your thoughts in the comment section below if you would take that trade off. Four, property size. Most buyers think price per square foot is the best indicator of a property's value. They'll quote these comparisons as better or worse or cheaper or more expensive. But property size, both from the interior and total square footage, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, they're only one part of the equation. So let's take these two properties for example. You're getting much more bang for your buck per square foot or per bedroom or bathroom when comparing the two, right? What if I now included the price difference? Doesn't that make it even better? But property size isn't property size since you can't compare a Japanese strawberry to a lemon, both from the fruit itself and the urban dictionary meaning of a lemon. If you've lived on the island, you know that the three factors mentioned previously on location, view and privacy, and accessibility play a much bigger role in the value. If you don't, contact me and let's find you a Japanese strawberry home. Or lychee home, I think both are super tasty fruits. What you can use when determining property size is when the prior three factors are similar. But again, property size isn't just property size and the size of the bedrooms and bathrooms play just as important a role as the amount themselves. Property layout and usability are similar in that regard. It's also the first factor on this list that can change. Number five, property condition. I really thought about putting property condition above property size because of the impact renovations can have on the price, especially when done well. It's well known that if you want to net increase the value of your home, you renovate kitchens and bathrooms. 
that hearsay comes from a reason. The one entire subset of buyers that make money professionally proving that it's true are home flippers. And the best example I can give you of how much it matters is this example right here. I was talking to a friend of mine when it got relisted after the renovations about how absurdly high the price was. I based it off of the comps here using the first four factors as my basis of comparison. The most apples to apples comp says value was still above this red line. And even if it sold on the high end, it barely squeezed 2 million. And as you can see here, those properties are much nicer. The renovations were definitely done well, but $1 million more due to renovations with no permits or structural changes. Now I even made a friendly wager with him that there was no way it was going to sell anywhere around that list price. <laughs> Boy, was that wrong. Look at this. Would you pay that much? The reason it happened leads me to the takeaway in renovations. Buyers will pay a premium for renovations because it's a ready to move in home. Why? If you're buying a house, how much down payment are you putting down? How much does renovations cost? How much time will it take? How much impact will it have on your life? Is a contractor good? How sure are you of that? There is so much risk, money, and time involved that buyers will pay any premium for the finished product. And any house flipper knows that. They also know that not all renovations are made equally. A good renovation can really unlock the full potential of a home. I'm watching this show on Hulu called Your Home Made Perfect that does an exceptional job of both helping homeowners envision the change and unlocking the potential. Most of it will never work on Oahu though since permits take forever. Now in conclusion, it all depends. Sorry. Depends. No, 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 no. Depends. Depends. Everything relates to each other and just like your body, the home factors all work together into a price. However, there is one factor that isn't in the top five that actually trumps them all. The macroeconomic condition. Now the economy, interest rates, job growth, population growth, new development, companies relocating, all increase or decrease the total market. This is the ocean that rises all boats. Now yours may be better than the one next to you, but if the tide is flowing out like it is right now, you're still going to be going down no matter what. Learn more about the real estate market in my Stats Don't Lie series here. Therefore, being a good realtor is not only about being an expert in one neighborhood or one specific building, it's about understanding how all of these elements go together explaining it to you in a way that you understand so you can make the informed decision. Now I've helped countless buyers exactly this way and I would say this is the reason I've been so successful over the years. With all that said, a good house is like the definition of obscenity. Supreme Court Potter Stewart said, I know it when I see it. You combine all of these factors into a feeling and that feeling is so whether you're a check off all boxes kind of person or a bang for your buck kind of person, the right house is out there for you. And it's my job to get you that house for the best price possible. This is the first video of a new series in which we'll explore these homes using these factors to evaluate them. I'll be adding it over here. So subscribe now so you'll be notified when it drops. Thanks for watching and if you're looking to buy or have any questions, contact me today. If you do enjoy the content, I would really appreciate you liking and subscribing for the YouTube algorithm, but more importantly, so you can keep up and see all of my new videos. If you have any thoughts on what we should be talking about next, please leave it in the comments and I'll consider it for the next week's video.